As a contemporary independent researcher of the African persuasion, irrespective of how thorough my research and analysis may be, I inevitably attract a substantial amount of criticism from those predisposed to and conditioned by the traditional Eurocentric perspectives. Some of these criticisms are fair since no researcher will ever present flawless theories that everyone will agree with. However, a majority of these criticisms are largely based on lies, fabrications, poor academic process and the questionable interpretation of data. Welcome to the Rebunked series, where we'll be directly addressing the claims made by our strongest critics. Don't forget to subscribe, as in this new channel we'll be tackling much broader areas of research and directly tackling some of the most controversial topics in history. This is her big curtain call. Yuya plus Fuya equals T and she brings out these mummies, okay? Should we have some fun? I think we should have some fun. Let's have some fun with Yuya, Tuya and T. And let's see if these people are actually... Because what, you know, you can see the implication here, isn't it? Look at the the wavy blonde hair um, and the wavy hair of T. These were all white people, right? Or these were all Eurasians, right? Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see if that's actually logical. Because we can we can test this. Once again, we, we know. where are we going with this? So let's start off with Queen T's father, because yes, her parents were Yuya and Tuya. Now, I'm going to start off, strangely enough, with this image. Typical Eurocentrism, but I just want to share this with you, because even they know when they create this stuff that it just doesn't hold any ground. This is obviously some ridiculous reconstruction, but why have I shown you this? Well, look, let's have a look at the lips of Yuya. Now, guys. Here's a, a pop quiz. Do mummy's lips get thicker than they were in real life or do they get thinner? I think we all know the answer that your features will actually thin out substantially. You lose all of the moisture. I spoke about the fact that mummy, when you're looking at a mummy, you're looking at essentially a desiccated human being. Note, it is generally accepted that the average mummy does not resemble the body of any healthy living human being. And yet Eurocentrists, in their desperation to find a resemblance, build entire reconstructions solely based on the paradigm of these long-dead persons having totally unchanged facial features. A curious, yet characteristically dubious, Eurocentric double standard. Being and the example that I gave, or always give, is that you'll never find a mummy with breasts, for instance anabati or any of these things okay they won't have these things because they'll all be completely desiccated and the same thing happens to your face now have a look at the lips of yuya for the reconstruction they've actually made them fitter can you imagine how big yuya's lips would have been in real life the fact that even mummified you can see you've just got these two empty sacks on the face and even the nose they've kept exactly the same size now let's let's make the nose bigger considering how big it is in its mummified state this is very clearly an african person this rwandan male presents a much more likely physical phenotype for the mummy of yuya based on the representation of his facial features in life and in death let's talk about the hair now i'm going to pull up an image of yuya's bright blonde hair here's a really good one so there's yuya's bright blonde hair does now tell me anyone does that look like natural blonde hair to you anyone with common sense will tell you no since the subject of the effects of environmental and chemical oxidation on melanin in hair is deliberately skirted by modern egyptologists because of the obvious encouragement it gives delusional eurocentrics to pretend blonde and red-headed mummies in africa are a common natural phenomena However, the cause of this chemical discoloration is actually well known and is not the subject of great mystery they present it to be. So let's tackle that today. In their paper titled Chemical Evaluation of Eumelanin Maturation, Martin Jarenmark and all state invertebrates, the most common types of melanins are eumelanin and pheomelanin which are associated with black, brown and red, yellow colors, respectively. 
However, systematic spectral changes upon maturation reduced these dissimilarities, indicating that intense heat and pressure treatment leads to the formation of a partially degraded eumelanin molecular structure. I would posit an ideal environment to simulate such heat and pressure would be resin-wrapped mummies buried for 3,000 years in the world's hottest climate. So if you haven't been on one of my live streams about hair before, I've explained this ad nauseum. The colour of your hair is a result of theomelanin and eumelanin. Theomelanin gives you red and blonde hair and eumelanin gives you brown and black hair. Eumelanin is dominant and theomelanin, it, theomelanin is recessive, so it sits underneath. What must be understood at this point is that those possessing dark pigmented hair carry both forms of melanin as stated by Wakamatsu in the following study. This study concluded that human dark, brown to black hair, melanin consists of approximately 85% eumelanin and 15% derived pheomelanin. So essentially when you have, everyone has a mixture of both chemicals both theomelanin and eumelanin and this is why black people or asian people or anyone with brown and brunette hair is able to apply peroxide to their hair and their hair will turn blonde or white depending on on the level of peroxide or the amount of peroxide or the amount of process they go through and what essentially happens is it puts your hair through oxidative stress and this creates chemical destabilization which will destabilize the eumelanin, but will leave the theomelanin intact because theomelanin is a little bit stronger. That people have naturally red and blonde hair. Not some, all. That's why you're all able to dye your hair and your hair gets lighter. This is not naturally blonde hair that you're looking at. Let me make this very, very clear. This entire argument just needs to get absolutely thrown in the bin. It's the most stupid argument that people make. So this is what a natural blonde looks like. I'm sure you've come across a natural blonde before. Now what you'll notice about a natural blonde, sorry, let me stretch this up. What you'll notice about a natural blonde is that natural blonde hair is always dark at the roots. In fact, when you get someone with natural blonde hair and they get a buzz cut, it's very hard to even tell that they're blonde a lot of the time. You might think that they're brunette until the hair grows out a little bit. So you'll see that it's dark at the root. This is a natural blonde. If you look closely, the eyebrows are essentially brown. This is natural blonde hair. Now, let me show you for comparison, peroxide blonde hair. This is peroxide blonde hair, okay? This is a result of chemical destabilization. It is blonde, to the roots and this is a black man with peroxide blonde hair if that's not a good enough example let's pull up another one there's another black man with peroxide blonde hair now let me for those of you who are not getting the point let me drive this home and pull up that image of yuya again and tell me does yuya's hair look more like a natural blonde or more like a peroxide blonde which does his hair look more like wouldn't you say that that is quite a similar situation that we have going on there it's very clear that this is a result of so the point is that there has been oxidative stress or some kind of chemical process that has changed the hair color during the mummification process, obviously 3,000 years could do that to you. Or also Egyptologists blasting these mummies with radiation like Sheikh Antidiop said they were doing, yeah, could cause this to happen to hair. None of this is a natural occurrence. So when you see the mummy of both Yuya and Thuya, understand that we're talking about hair that has been changed artifice okay it's not naturally blonde hair because naturally blonde hair doesn't look like that even in solomon and i know a lot of people will say well you get blonde people in the solomon no it doesn't look like that this is chemically blonde hair 
all of these people had black hair in life, every single one of them. And you're looking at chemical destabilization. So, you know, I, I don't have to sell that argument to you. I just need to show you the images. And you know, for a fact, when blonde hair goes blonde to the roots, like an electric blonde, you know for a fact that is a chemical process. You know for a fact that's not natural. And the fact that Eurocentrists even lean on that is really quite desperate. But, you know, there you go.